Hi, this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So the weather has really turned here in the UK. We're in the beginning of October and it's hard to believe that only a few weeks ago we were all sweltering and not sleeping very well because of the heat overnight. But it's definitely, definitely on the way to winter now. And we really need to do something about that in the UK if you have a greenhouse or a grow room. The temperatures outside have plummeted they are roughly around about 12 degrees Celsius and they will plummet quite considerably more yet. So I've just got a little wind of opportunity to do something about it and try and create the kind of environment here that won't cost me too much money. I'm just going to reel off all the different factors to take into consideration on all the different steps I'm taking in order to save as much money as I possibly can and maintain the plants at the current level of growth. So let's jump in. And we are in. Okay, so let's get straight into this. So my main issue, of course, isn't heating the greenhouse. Providing you've got heaters like a fan heater, like I've got down here, and a controller to run it off, like I have over there, then heating it isn't an issue. The main issue is actually keeping the heat in. Now, I really, really wish that when I first started with this particular greenhouse, uh, two to three years ago, I really, really wish that I'd have spent even more time than I did spend in insulating it. You can see I have bubble wrap up there, but I've got to the point now where I really can't get any more bubble wrap up on these walls without actually removing all the plants. I'm gonna have to do that at some point. The manufacturers say the bubble wrap lasts around three years. I'm expecting it to last longer than that. And you can see it doesn't have any algae on it, so it has done really, really well. It's special UV resistant bubble wrap. It's not just packaging bubble wrap. Um, and I also, if I were talking about, we're talking about bubble wrap, I'd also recommend getting as large bubbles as you can. I think mine are about two and a half centimeter uh, diameter bubbles. But I definitely wouldn't recommend the very tiny bubbles. It, it's just too difficult to work with. Very, very tricky to, to actually handle. The larger bubbles are better from both an insulative point of view and from a handling point of view. Okay, it's one thing if you are actually just trying to keep the frost off a greenhouse. It's another thing entirely if you're trying to keep tropical plants. Uh, things like orchids, carnivorous plants, anything really that you're talking about going above 12 degrees Celsius. If you're trying to keep that kind of an atmosphere, that kind of a, an environment throughout the winter months, if you live in a temperate climate like I do in the north of the UK, and I know many people who grow these kind of things uh, have far worse winters than we have, but if you know that your outside temperatures are going to drop right down to freezing and below, then you really definitely should spend as much time as you can wrapping the inside of the greenhouse. Don't think for one minute that by putting bubble wrap up on the inside of the greenhouse is gonna make it hotter in summer. It doesn't. Providing that you've got uh, louvre windows and vents and doors, then it will not make any difference during the summer months. It's like saying, you know, if you've got a house with double glazing on, if you open all the windows and the doors, the double glazing is gonna keep it warm. Well, it, it's not. The only, the only time the bubble wrap will actually help is if the environment is completely closed up. Somebody did mention to me that shouldn't you have some ventilation? Well, yeah, that would be absolutely ideal, but obviously if the temperature's zero outside and I go and open up any windows or doors for ventilation, then obviously I'm gonna lose all that heat. So yes, that would be absolutely ideal. And what I find that I, I can do, you know, even in the middle of winter, you do get the occasional mild day that you can open the greenhouse up and try and dry it off. Um, but for the most part, if it's too cold, in, you know, unless you've got the money to spend and you, you're quite happy for all that heat to go out the window, then it's just something you've got to live with. You've got to live with the fact that it's not an ideal environment. I'm growing tropical plants in a very non-tropical place. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what I'm actually going to do in terms of insulating this. As you can see, we've already got a layer of insulation on there. So 
If I have my time again, I would definitely redo the, the walls um, and up to the up to the, the gable ends as well. I would double bubble. Now, so I have actually got double bubbles on some of them uh, because I had the, the smaller bubbled bubble wrap up there and I put the, the larger bubble wrap over the top. But I would definitely do it as much as you can, you can get away with. Now, there is a drawback in, in as much as... The more layers you have on, the more light that you lose. If you're like me, then you will purchase some grow lights like I've got up here. But even so, that it's not it's not ideal. And you know, the brighter, the better the grow lights you can actually get, the, the more chance you've got of actually growing the plants properly. But the, the heating is a big thing. And if you live in the UK at the moment, you'll know that the heating bills are going absolutely through the roof at the moment through one thing and another, probably COVID related, but the gas prices, electricity prices have gone really, really high. Now, if you're interested in how to put the bubble wrap up, because the, there is a good way and a bad way of doing it, I've gone into great detail in that in another of my videos, which I'll put up as a, a card right at the end of this video. So what we're gonna do is just quickly talk through the different steps that I'm actually taking. So I've said already, Yes, I wish I had double bubbled all the walls prior to actually growing the plants in here. I can't do that now, that's too late. But what I can do, first of all, is deal with all the vulnerable points. And the vulnerable points are the, the windows and the doors and the vents. So starting with the louvre windows, I've got five louvre windows in here. And as you can see under here, if you can see past all the mess, I've actually bubbled over the louvre windows. I've closed the louvre windows, obviously. I've also got some like draft excluder along where the gap would be. It's only a very small gap, but it's enough to let the draft in. So I've bubbled over on this side, and I don't know if you can see through there, but I've actually also bubbled over on the other side. Because it's such a vulnerable point, it's well worth doing twice. So do it on this side and do it on the outside as well. Obviously anything that you put on the outside of the greenhouse is not going to be quite as effective as on the inside, but to be honest, anything you can do, anything you can do to protect against that colder coming into your greenhouse or the warmer escaping out of your greenhouse will definitely be beneficial. So I've not actually done them all yet, but we can assume that all the louvre windows have been sorted. So where else is a vulnerable point? Well, of course, the vents are also a vulnerable point. So if I just take you up to the roof here, you can see that I have removed the automatic vent uh, openers. Now what I've actually done, I've not taken them out you can you can just like release them now i don't i don't want to take them completely off because um it's they're easy to lose especially these little pins at the end so what i thought i'd do this time i'd just take them out of there so they're not actually active i've put a little bar lock on there to keep it in place i've opened it up because i know at some point it's going to expand if it gets the sun on it and i don't want it like opening up and poking anything through uh, whatever it is because it, once it starts opening nothing is going to stop it so I've got it in a place that it's not going to cause any damage um, that will stay there all through the winter and what I'm going to do next you can see I've got like a covering of bubble wrap on the actual window that stayed up all year but I'm now going to cover the whole entire thing with bubble wrap and you can see I've actually done it on this side now so that's got two layers of bubble wrap and I'm going to even try and bubble wrap the whole of the roof again because the heat goes out through the roof more than any other place, as you can imagine. Now, as I said previously, wherever you can add extra bubble wrap is going to be beneficial, providing you can then take some action to rectify the loss of light because the loss of light is going to be a big thing. I'm still going to be purchasing some more lights in future because the way I've got the lights, I use them as like strip lights overhead. Um, it's not really good enough for some of these higher light plants to, to grow uh, optimally. So in the future, that's something that's, for me anyway, I'm gonna invest in a little bit more. So I'm going to do all the vents in the same way. I've removed all the automatic vent openers. I'm going to cover them all with another layer of bubble wrap. 
And outside, in fact, when my latest section of bubble wrap arrives, I'm going to do that entire gable end over there on the outside. And then I'm going to try, and I've done this before with smaller greenhouses, I'm going to try and do up to the eaves on the outside so the outside walls i'm going to also bubble wrap so i can't i can't do the same thing on the outside over the top of the roof because it's too high for me i'm also going to clean the entire greenhouse on the outside so all the glass is going to get uh, soapy water complete uh, wash down. I haven't done that all year as we had all the shading on that side of the greenhouse over the summer that's where you get all the muck uh, has accumulated and that's where if I've got any algae it's accumulating on the outside of the window out there. I guess the rain would wash it off a little bit but I really think it needs a proper scrub so that's what I'm going to do this afternoon that's my job this afternoon. I've got a big long pole and I can uh, see if I can reach up there and do that. So we've dealt with the vulnerable points, the louvre windows, the vents, we've added extra insulation on the outside, we've added extra insulation on the inside to the bubble wrap. The front door here, which is also a big vulnerable point, there's not really a lot I can do with this. I'd love to be able to just bubble over the whole entire thing, but obviously then I can't get in. The inside of the door, you can see, already has a layer of bubble wrap and I have this screen on here as well, but it still really is a vulnerable point. So if anybody's got any ideas about the door, I'm all ears. I'm going to do the outside as well, just on that gable end, but again, obviously the worst vulnerable point, the door, I can't actually do anything about that. I already have foam tiles on the floor, which is pretty good, I think, in terms of keeping the heat or the heat from escaping through the floor or the coal from rising up from the floor. Uh, these aren't actually porous tiles, but they do kind of slot together in sections and that's where any water drains through. These have been a really good buy and because it's the greenhouse is just kind of laid on the burr floor, there isn't a concrete base underneath, uh, they've done a really good job of covering any little irregularities in, in the, the levelling of the floor. So I've been quite pleased with these tiles and they should really help with the insulation. If you remember last year or throughout the year, I did have a fleece up at the top here over the roof. Now that was really useful actually throughout last winter and this summer because it did a couple of things. One, it actually reduced the condensation because if we've not got the ventilation going in winter, then we have got, or we will be getting a lot of condensation on the inside of the plastic. So it reduces that, but it also, when these vents were open during the summer, it prevented any insects coming in. Um, this year, I mean, touch what I'm touching my head here. This year, I've had the fewest number of bugs come in and the fewest number of problems. I've not had any aphid problems whatsoever, touch wood, as I say, on any of my streptocarpus or any of my plants, orchids, whatever. I've not had any scare, anything like that. I did have some vine weevil early in the year, but they can come in through the front door. Uh, so the fleece was good for that, but what it did do, unfortunately, the downside, all these things have a payoff. The downside was that it did reduce the light quite significantly. And since I've removed the fleece in order to get another layer of bubble wrap up, which I haven't done yet, but uh, I've done one of them, which I showed you earlier on, but that one also needs another layer of bubble wrap. I'm going to do this entire roof over here so that um, I'm doing my absolute best to keep that heat in as much as I possibly can. Uh, so yeah, I removed the fleece. I'm not going to put that up again, I don't think. We'll, we'll see how things go. At the moment, I'm feeling like my plants are lacking a little bit in light and I want to try and get as much light as I can. Uh, it's gonna be a nice sunny day today. It's very unusual for us. We've had a, a horrendous couple of weeks. So it's looking like we're gonna get a little bit of sunshine today and hopefully that will give them some light that they have been missing. So I'll just have a little chat about heaters. So you've seen the heaters that I've got. I've got this, uh, that's a more expensive one over there. That costs three times what this one down here cost. And I have to say, they're exactly the same. I really wouldn't go and buy an expensive one again. I think these ones are about 45 pound and they work just as well. I've got another one of these, a spur one, just in case anything happens to them. But uh, they're, they're pretty good, you know, they've, they've been going, for now two and a bit years uh, no no real problems with them 
This one is a two kilowatt. That one's a three kilowatt over there. Uh, but my circuits won't take so much at once because it's all on the same circuit as you can imagine being in the greenhouse It's all runs to the garage and it's all on that one circuit So I've got to have this one here at a lower uh, Kilowattage so this one is actually running at one kilowatt at the moment uh, I think that one's on two over there. So in total we've got three if they're both on at the same time uh, it wouldn't do obviously for the circuit to trip in the middle of the night when the temperatures are really low so i have seen people especially over uh, this year tell me a couple of people have told me that they're using these oil filled radiators so first of all my first thoughts on oil filled fill radiators i mean i used to have one of those years ago uh, and they are really good they they certainly do the job they heat up a space really efficiently first thing to think about is if you go and get one that's one and a half kilowatts and you compare it to a one and a half kilowatt uh, electric fan heater then you know the fan heater on for one hour is going to cost you exactly the same as an oil fill radiator that's on for one hour if they're both the same kilowattage if you like you see the logic of that however the thing with an oil fill radiator is that the the properties of the oil mean that it acts like a sump like a heat sump so what the idea behind them is that if you let's say you had a fan heater like that one on for an hour the idea is that for the same space if you have an oil fill radiator it probably won't need to be on for an hour because the properties of the oil mean that that it heats up pretty quickly but then that gives off the heat while the the radiator can actually flick off you know the thermostat can turn it off and it will continually give off that heat uh, over a certain length of time so the idea is that the oil fill radiator won't need to be on for the entire hour it will it will be able to flick off and continue to give off the heat before it comes back on again so in other words it's more efficient it should cost less uh, on a like a, a, a an hour by hour basis than a fan heater should that's the idea behind it however when you look at how expensive they are you know even the cheap ones are 50 pound plus if you get one with a thermostat on it and i would need two in here because obviously i've got two separate areas um, so the question for me is if i go and spend 100 pounds on oil fill radiators how long would it be before i got that 100 pound back would i be better off just keeping the 100 pounds and paying that to whatever extra it costs me to use a fan heater fan heaters are really clean they're really quick and they certainly do the job they don't take up much space either that's another issue so i don't know i'm a bit i'm a bit um one way and the other with the oil fill radiators yes i can see the logic behind it but that initial outlay of 100 plus pounds it makes me wonder whether i will actually get that back you know will it will it take a few years before i get that but i really don't know it all depends on the kind of winter that we have so uh, i wonder if anybody else is using oil fill radio to tell me what you think about that is it is that something that maybe you're interested in um i i certainly i've not dismissed the idea i like the idea um i like the efficiency of it but whether i would actually get my money back pretty quickly or whether I'd be better off just keeping the hundred pounds and, and seeing what, how far that goes. I don't know, that's just something to think about, but it's certainly an alternative, isn't it? If uh, you're looking to heat your grow room or your your grow space or your, or your greenhouse. So I think greenhouses in general, certainly in the UK, you know, they're not, they're not designed for the kind of thing that I'm using them for. I really wish, actually, greenhouse manufacturers would take this on board and do something about the insulation of greenhouses. Because it makes sense to me that if they can get people to use them all year round, because this in the UK, they're not really used all year round, not in the sense that I'm using them. They tend to be used for seedlings or for overwintering things that are uh, semi-hardy. So really, most people, if they are going to uh, insulate off the the greenhouse and heat it what they're generally looking to do is just keep the frost off so they're generally looking to keep it 
uh, around about five degrees just to make sure that things don't don't get hit with the frost. Very few people are actually trying to get it up to 12 degrees plus. But of course, if you can get people interested in this, and I know there's a lot of orchid growers in the UK, and if you get people interested in, in house plants and tropical plants and having them all in a place that it doesn't make the house a mess, um, then it makes sense to me that greenhouse manufacturers would be interested in that. You know, they may be, it might be something that they're thinking that they can get more money from people, they can get people who become customers, not just through those spring and summer months, but also through the winter months. I don't know, you know, some if any greenhouse manufacturers ever watch my videos, then uh, please do something about the insulation because it would really make my life a lot easier. And I'm no doubt it would make a lot of other people's lives a lot easier. I can't really see that it's a, a difficult nut to crack. It's just a case of, uh, either manufacturing something that fits specifically with a greenhouse. So this is a Rhino greenhouse. Maybe if they could manufacture something that could just slot into place initially when you know that you, you're going to be going through a winter or maybe something that could slot on the outside that, that would add to the insulative properties of it. That would be absolutely brilliant. Um, I can't see it happening anytime soon, if I'm honest, you know, I've had a greenhouse for nearly 30 years now and it's not happened in all that time, but you never know, do you? Hobbies change, times change, maybe something will come up with something. Okay, so can you put in the comments, if you are in the same situation as me, maybe not the exact same situation, but are you looking to insulate your greenhouse? What do you do? Do you do anything different to me? Or is there anything that I'm doing that you're not doing? If we can share these ideas around, then it'll help us all save a few, a few pennies, won't it? So what I'll do now is I'll put a card up on screen which will show you an in-depth video all about bubble wrap and the ins and outs of applying bubble wrap to a greenhouse. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.